Okay, so this is uh, the first of a series of videos on how to convert uh, a Robox single or dual uh, to run a Duet Wi-Fi. Uh, it's not a straightforward thing, so you definitely need to have a, a little bit of software skills, a little, little bit of patience, some soldering skills, um, and be methodical. Um, the good, I guess the, the good thing about these do it Wi-Fi boards, which I've temporarily installed there for this video to make things easy, is they are pretty tolerant to uh, reverse voltages, shortages um, on the uh, the drivers to the servos, the heater blocks. Um, doesn't like fans being connected the wrong way around. That can pop a fuse, but then you can replace the fuse. Um, so it, it's generally a pretty tolerant board. Um, the one thing it definitely doesn't like though is if you wire up the 24 volts the wrong way around to the board it's just that's not a good idea but generally it's, it's pretty tolerant to short circuits it'll tell you whether you've shorted motor phases in the in the duet type interface and um, so so it's pretty good um so unlike the robox board where if you breathe on it it might pop um certainly if you're messing around with any of the ffc cables and you can damage extruders and motherboards really really easily and very very quickly uh, this board pretty tolerant um, it's not indestructible and if you I'll put a link to the duet um, Wi-Fi web page and you can read that it's how it's pretty solid and it's been tested with various things but yeah it's, you still got to be sensible and take your time and check your wiring but it is it is pretty tolerant to mistakes so what we've got here is this was a Robox, um, one of the first jewels that came out. Um, it has been modified a little bit, so it's got it's got the magnetic bed that I do. So that's got high temperature magnets under there, so they go up to I think about 150 degrees, so you, you don't lose the magnetism. Um, what else have we got? We've got replacement belts in here. We've got much quieter stepper motors. Um, I've left the z-axis ones as they are not don't really contribute to the noise um, and it's got you know the classic failure point of these things the z-axis so we've got some of these these collars that Mike Crane does um, basically you chop the stepper put a collar in there put an m5 by 0.8 threaded rod on here um, this is steel rod I've got it's not ideal, it's zinc coated nuts in here, steel zinc coated, they really should be brass, but you know, they work pretty well. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, so the, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this set up to, to just drive the axes, which is basically where I've got it to before I thought, oh, I don't want to do a video on this. Um, so usually the first thing you do when you get one of these duet boards is you need to do the uh the initial setup and config which i'll put a link to that um there's no point in me going through it on here but i'll just voice it over basically you'll get one of these boards and you know usually they have the firmware installed but that's about it so you use the usb port here uh connect the board to your computer uh and like I said, I'll put a link to how you set it up, but it's not that complicated. And you connect that up, you put a terminal emulator on it, and basically you just set it, set it usually come with an SD card actually as well. Um, with sometimes if you're lucky, it comes with something on it, um, maybe a Prusa clone, set of config files or something. Uh, but equally, it can come with nothing on it. Uh, the SD cards, to be honest, are pretty crap these 128 meg ones uh and it's not the size that's crap it's just they're not reliable at all so i've had quite a few issues um where the main config file on here you know, suddenly gets corrupted it can't be read the board won't boot it won't connect to wi-fi all sorts of things happen and it's basically the, these sd cards are, are garbage um so i just replace it with a you know, a decent one, you know, a decent sand disc, four gig, don't need to be anything massive. Um, but yeah, just I'd replace that as the earliest opportunity. But I'll leave that one in for now because it surprisingly it is working. But you can, you can suddenly get 
fail blocks on them. You can't write to certain areas of the card. They're just not great. Um, so, yeah, so basically, first thing you do is you connect the USB to here. You connect a terminal emulator to the board. Uh, and you need to set up the, the Wi-Fi. So you, I think off the top of my head, you do an M552 um s minus one which disables the wi-fi adapter then you do an m552 s naught which puts it into idle all of this should come back for you on the terminal emulator then you do an m587 s and then in quotes the name of your wi-fi network uh and then p and then in quotes the password for that network uh, and doing that, that M M five eight seven command will actually store it. And then if you do an M five five two S one after that, that enables the Wi Fi. You just see a blue blinking light here, and then it'll connect to your Wi Fi network. Uh, and at that point, you can. Well, yeah. What I, what I'll do because I'll put all the config files on the uh, on the Robox website. You'll then be able to connect to your Wi-Fi board, which I'll, I'll I'll do this in a minute and power it up. Um, and then you'll be able to see the config file and then you can do all the tweaks and changes and access everything then through the GUI and you don't have to use Terminal Emulator ever again. Uh, unless you have you know, corruption of the uh, the files on this card, uh, in which case, yeah, you will do. So, yeah, so, so what do you need to do to start with? So the first obvious thing you need to do is wire up uh, the mains. So with everything stripped out of this row box, the extruders have gone. Um, the motherboard's gone. Um, all the bracketry, everything's gone round here. So all you tend to be left with is the 240 volt feed in, uh, the earth cables, which what we're not going to do on this one, I did on my other one, I used the, the rocking motion to uh, do the Z, you know, the Z at the bed height. Um, and you can, you know, use that as the probe for the bed mesh routine. But one on, on this one, I'm going to put a, uh, a BL touch on it. Uh, but I'll cover both methods in a later video. So, yep, so we've got the, got the wiring. So you, you've got your mains voltage here. So I've done a, a pretty gash job um, of wiring the mains up, but at least it is insulated and uh, heat shrunk un under there. Uh, and you get your 24 volt feed and feed it down onto this board now it's this one on the left that's positive what I tend to like doing as well just in case is if I've got a marker pen if I can find one there we go so conveniently this one is positive, so I'm going to mark that as positive. Like that, so you never get it wrong. <laughs> now, ironically, uh, the 28 volt, uh, sorry, the 24 volt bed feed, which we will be using, but we won't be using to drive the bed directly. We'll drive it through the solid state relay, so we can drive the bed with 240 volts. Positive is the opposite side, so. In fact, it doesn't need to be a plus, just mark it red. So that is certainly worth remembering. Because, um, yeah, you're going to definitely have a bad day if you wire that the wrong way around, and the board's generally, that's it. So, yeah, so we've got the mains coming in. It goes into the standard Robox power supply at the top. Probably bin off this fan later on, because never really use it. It doesn't really... I'll see the point of it anyway cooling the chamber down afterwards it doesn't really do anything so we'll get rid of that um, and that's probably where i'll mount the solid state relay for the bed or i might put it in here uh, on my previous one that i've done i actually 3d printed a case uh, on another printer in abs case and put the bow box board on the back of the printer uh, on, the, on the black metal but for this one i think it might as well just go there um i don't you know i've ground off the uh the Robox spool holder because it's pointless um, and won't be using any of the Robox reels just be using whatever I buy um, from colour fab or, or what have you 
and just feed it straight into an extruder. Um, so anyway, yeah, so we've got mains, 24 volt feed to the board. Um, and then the first thing you're going to have to do is wire up the, the X, Y and Z steppers. Um, none of the Robox cables. I might have one lying around. I've got one down here. So, the stepper motor side of Robox cable is fine. That side isn't. Um, it's a, a small JST rather than sort of like the standard size ones that you can see there. So what you can do, the, the duet boards come with a whole, I've got another, another duet board here. They come with all the connectors. Uh, actually, I've not put them on this one yet. <coughs> uh, and the heat sinks to sit on the driver chips to keep them cool. They come with all the connectors that you'd need and all the inserts to make up. You can buy the expensive crimping tool to make these, or you basically you can just solder them and, and push them in, and that works just as well. Um, so let's just put this one back. There you go. So, two ways you can do it you can either use the original Robox cables. Um, and you know, make sure you, you bell the wiring properly, or and basically cut that end off there and create the row box. So they use the uh, these terminal blocks and the connectors to make up the connections. Or in my case, I just happen to have a little bit little bit long, uh, but some uh, motor cables to you know these standard connectors, like like that. So the, you can, there's two things you can do, is you can just shove them on as they are, or you can grind those little bits off, uh, and you know it makes it a little bit easier and doesn't stress that plastic tab when you push it on. But to be honest, they go on pretty pretty fine, he says, except for that one as it starts to push the pin out. So let's pull that off. And there you can see that something to be wary of sometimes the pins push out of the connectors so i'm just going to, have to put the phone down and put that back on properly there we go it's back on so you basically you've got your, your two cables to drive so actually a quick overview of the board then actually it's probably worthwhile now. So there, there are your two heaters for two hot ends, extruder one, drive, extruder two drive, X, Y, two Z drives. If you're only using one Z drive, which you won't be on a row box, uh, if you're using two Z drives, you connect them like that. If you're using one Z drive, you just use the bottom and you put some of the jumpers supplied and bridge those two pins and those two pins on that connector. Uh, but these are both Z drives, 24 volts there. These, uh, I can't remember now. I think, yeah, these are the various, so they're always on fans and they're pulse width modulated fans. Uh, starting to not remember now. These are some of the limit switches. I think that's ex weirdly extruder limit switches and then X, Y, and Z limit switches. They are the thermocouples for the hot ends. Uh, that is the bed thermocouple. That's the bed power. Uh, I think it's, I think it's that one's a Z probe. Uh, and then you've got the expansion ports here for various things. You can drive a lot more extruders or more, and a lot of other things. Right. So anyway, so yep. Yeah. Back to it. So we've got the X, the X wired up to here. Um, it's a bit of a mishmash this because it was was wired differently to a Robox bow before, but that's that's the X wired up the Y to uh, the bed motor here, which is a an aftermarket motor from Ooze Nest, which is much quieter. Um, it's actually stepped away from the metal plate and held held in. Yep, hot glue, uh, and that's lasted 
for two years and it's not moved and it's nice and rock solid so it keeps it nice and solid there stops it rocking about uh, and then you've got uh, a z-axis one to here and one rooted underneath the cage and to the other z-axis um, oh actually uh, while we're at it just a quick update on here so this has got you know, it's got aftermarket belts on here they're much better it's got these type of lovely igus style bearings metal shell with plastic inside the super quiet uh, and yeah so the z-axis motor has got a different pulley on it oh, sorry x-axis so that that's a metal pulley, a bit better perhaps, uh, but the teeth are different, so you do have to set up the steps properly. And again, this aftermarket pulley, the Y-axis is a little bit different. Um, I had to, to bridge it with one of these because that's all I had at the time. Um, and then this lovely thing down here, for whatever reason, Robox, they step the shaft down from 5mm to, I'm not, I think it's 4mm, goes through a 4mm brass bushing in here. And then it has your, its cog on it. And that, that step down is really, really annoying. Um, so I've ended up having to use the 5mm five, the five shaft on the stepper and push it all the way through. And I have to, have to do a different bushing on here. But for your, you know, your robot, you don't have to be changing these motors. I'd recommend you do because it's super quiet. You'll see how quiet it is in a minute. Um, but yeah, you can just use all the standard motors. It's no problem maybe do a video on these later if people are interested so let's get the computer back on so if I power this up let's get the uh, plug plug it in so Get the right plug, that always helps. I guess this one. There we go. So you get the 3.3 volts, the 5 volt light, and then you can see with that's the Wi Fi connector. I'm trying to connect to my Wi Fi network when it goes solid blue, it's connected. Um, and then I'm going to have to fire up another window because they're all my other printers on. Or some of the other printers, they're all on um, Duet Wi Fi's as well. So I think the IP address was 28. There, there we go. So I actually have a nice little tool somewhere. Where has it gone? Probably going to have lost it now, aren't I? So this, this, this tool, this. Uh, net watcher it's quite useful because you can set these duets up to have a fixed IP address or you could set that up through your router uh, but if not the router tends to give the same IP address anyway um, so here's all the things on my network right now these Express IF they're all the um, duet machines that I've got set up right now um, so it is that one there it's 28 so if you if you never quite know what ip address it is um, it will tell you when you do the terminal setup and you set the you know connect the network the first time it tells you what ip address it's um it's connected and usually it's always going to be that same one but if it isn't something like this wireless network watcher or your router or whatever to show you what's connected um and it's it's 28 so and that's basically what you get that's a duo interface uh, and if we go into the settings and system editor there's all the config files for a variety of things on there which I'll stick all on the uh, on the forum uh, you can see the Z probes reading a, a thousand there because it's not connected it's telling you what the temperature of this CPU is the voltage in it's quite nice it tells you all the head positions the drive positions speeds Heaters are open loop, so they're 2,000 degrees at the moment. Um, machine control, it won't let you um, do any movements at all until you've home the axes, 
unless you put in uh, it might be M303 I think it is to allow you to do un unhomed axes moves um, but a, a little sneaky way of doing it and um, I'm just going to move these axes to their minimums in my hand so we've just got a g-code console and I'm just there you can see it's saying insufficient axes home there I'm going to type G92 X0 Y0 and if we look at this so that's X and Y are pretty much at 0 it's at 0 now uh, and the Z is probably pretty high probably about 80 so I'll put Z80 in there that will make it a bit lower than that we'll call it 60 just so I don't hit the bed alright and sending that your axes suddenly go from unhomed, you've told it where they are, so it thinks it knows where they are in the homes now. So it's quite a nice quick way of doing it. So I'm gonna keep talking and I'm gonna shift the x-axis a hundred. So just as it's moving, there you go. You can and it'll drive a little bit too far at the moment, but yeah, it's uh, that's how quiet it is, and it'll stop at zero pretty much. <laughs> It doesn't if you overdrive it. Uh, me, I'll do it another way. So if we go 50, 50, and if we go back again, minus 50, minus 50, and then if I try and do another minus 50, won't do it. So yeah, 50, 100, 150. And the scaling on this print, because this, the other Duet Wi Fi robots doesn't use. Uh, the, the different the, the aftermarket motor and the, and the slightly different size pulley so the steps are set up for that one in this config file so it's just, I'm going to leave it that way because most people are probably going to start by using the steps for the standard steppers and the standard pulleys uh, this is slightly different which is why when I'm moving it to what it thinks is 150 it's actually overshooting and getting a lot further but yeah you can see how quiet it is uh, let's do the Y axis do Y100 yeah, you can see it's super, super quiet. Minus 100. So if we can do X and Y at the same time. Um, no, it does them sequentially. Um, but you can get a feel for how quiet it is. Uh, and then the Z axis will be a little bit noisy, to be fair. So if we come down a bit. So that's a bit noisier. Um, but you know the z-axis is normally doing that and it's your x, x and y that's moving a lot you can see that's lovely and quiet okay so that's that's the setup uh next video i'll go into uh sorting out the end stops uh, and setting up uh, yeah, we'll do the we'll do the BL touch and the end stops. Um, yeah, reason why I want to use the BL touch is have a look at this build tack plate. So you can see it's uh, it's actually been using one of the other row boxes. It's a bit of a mess that has the um, the Duet Wi-Fi set up, and you can see that the bed mesh leveling is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five by four. And you know, to get it done properly, you really need to have the nozzle um, hot, so that it's uh, there's no material oozed on the nozzle if you're going to do it that way. And you know, obviously, the nozzle's hitting the bed, and it's got to push against the, the spring on here and rock the head back. You know, do do that effectively, and that that motion is enough to you know push the nozzle into the bed and you know just cause damage over time. So I'd much rather use a BL touch that will keep the bed fresher uh, and to be honest this you end up having to put some offset in for the backlash in this mechanism anyway so it's 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 a lot easier just to use a, a BL touch uh, but we'll uh, we'll come on to that in another video okie doke uh, bye for now